Okay, welcome uh, to another episode of Crime Page of Bonnie Doesn't. Today we're craters of the moon, geothermal area down here in the North Island of New Zealand, looking at all the smoking tubes and pots and stuff. Tony's pots. Tony's smoking tubes and pots. You see all that stuff? Real hot shit. They got the hot shits down here. You like that? Anyway, we're going to check out some of the plant life. There's not much. There's not a lot of diversity, so it should be a quick video. I was going to check out some of the, uh, the mushrooms. A lot of them mycorrhizal that are occurring in this area where you get plenty of members of the, the uh, eucalyptus family Myrtaceae and the blueberry family Ericaceae. Yes, keep an eye out. Sometimes you find dildos abandoned in places like this. It's exactly the kind of place I'd expect to find a foot-long jelly dong. Just discarded and, and hid is almost in a fit of shame under the Kunzia. Uh, let's inspect this mysterious orange lichen. What is this? What is this, Alan? Oh, that's not lichen, that's algae. That's algae? You got an algae on her. Yeah, probably Trentopolia. How could you tell that's algae not lichen? Tell everybody how you can tell. You can see like the little little strands coming up. It doesn't have any uh, epithesia or anything. I don't see no epithesia on there. Nope. Oh, oh my god. Trentopolia. Bright, would you say those are carotenoid pigments? Who knows? Seems likely. We got piping hot fumaroles, we got stinking sinkholes, we got all kinds of different earthen ovens, smoking hot pipes and tubes, everything you need that accompanies a subduction zone where you get the Pacific Plate diving beneath westwardly uh, the uh, Aust Australian Plate. You can see all those, those freaking invasive pines too, that's kind of a bummer, huh? They got tamaracks up there too. They got the uh, lyrics. But look at how, look, you like the hot shit? Look at it, it's nice, huh? I don't understand why they got these signs and stuff up telling you not to go over there when that bright vivid green mass is telling you to come over there. It's saying come hither. I don't see any bouncers here though. Who's going to tackle you, huh? What are they going to do? Granted, you could fall in a 100 degrees Celsius uh, smoking mud hole, but uh, you know, you might also get to see a cool moss. Hot moss, Campylopus holometrium. A lot of moss down here in New Zealand, including this one that's endemic to geothermal areas and warm soils. And you're just looking at the gamito fight. <laughs> yes, many farts have been dispelled on this bench, but that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about Leptocophila juniperina. Okay, Eric Casey, the Apacrid subfamily, one of those cool southern hemisphere uh, blueberries. See, and there's those very, very obviously bird dispersed fruits. And juniperina, because it looks like a freaking, you know, juniperus communis under there. What happens if you eat one of these? Alan, you want to try eating one of these? Yeah. There you go. It looks like peppercorns. Yeah, what's it taste like? No flavor at all. A little bit mealy. No, it's kind of just going for a visual thing. Real Probably big, for the birds, you know. Real big seed in the middle. Yeah. And now, as you could see here, we got a good assortment of uh, little starts of uh, Lycopodiella. It's a lycopod, one of the uh, uh, earliest still living uh, vascular plants. You can see there's quite a bit right there. Lycopodiella volubile, I believe this is. They reproduce by spores. They're related to Selaginella, which is another cool plant. The, uh, the surface here, oh, it feels kind of hollow. You hear that? So I could fall in and fall into 100 degrees Celsius boiling hot water, all right, which is not an impossibility here. We're going to keep looking at this uh, lycopodiella right there because those imbricate uh, lycophils, those imbricate uh, tiny leaves really are something else to look at. You see this crawling bastard just kind of scrambles along the ground. And uh, when it is ready to release its spores, they come out of structures that look like that, right, in between those leaf axles. Almost looks like some sort of conifer. See how it's got like a little bit yellower color right there? And it's obviously kind of forming a little cone. See that? Hello? Are you down there? Why do they do that? Why do they bring all this invasive bullshit down here? You know, you got these, some kind of brooms, some sort of horticultural atrocity they brought over here from Europe. Real bad. This is like a podium volubile, volubile. That other one was certainly like a podiella, but I think it was Cernum. Anyway, either way, look at those pendant sporophylls. Pendant little dongs, can't get them to release any there. So those are the spore fills, and in here, of course, are those flattened sprays of leaves. That's insane. This almost looks like a Dacrocarpus seedling. You can see it's growing six feet tall up this Kunzia right here. So the dominant plant here is Kunzia by far, but you're also getting quite a few Pseudopanax arboreus, Aureliaceae, 
Carrot Order Apiales. You can see it up there with that, that maroon inflorescence. Here's one up close. Look at the glabrous leaves. Palmate leaves. You can see the old uh, abscission scars right there from where the uh, old leaves fell off. And then look at that inflorescence. The flower's not open yet. It's still kind of chilly, still winter, but, but beautiful nonetheless. And there's a good giveaway for the Carrot Order. Compound umbels. Umbels upon umbels. Almost just an inflorescence type. All right, how many flowers, how many individual flowers you got there? A thousand? Beautiful color to that. You know, Pseudopanax get used, gets used a lot for horticulture in the Bay Area, but uh, it's sure, certainly an entirely different thing seeing something in its native habitat. What pollinates these probably? Huh? Some sort of bird, you think? I don't know. Insect, kind of tiny flowers. Beautiful color to that. Though. Look at that maroon. It's like, it's like a port wine color. Look at that whole nice mossy understory of that lycopodium. Volubile, volubile. Volubile just means climbing. Dicolostoma volubile. It's a cool California native. You can see the flat sprays of foliage right there. Someone's been rooting around over here, digging through all the mossy moss, doing God knows what. Maybe some kind of bird? Huh? Could it be some sort of nasty mammal? I don't know. He just got some random smoke coming out from under a bridge. You know, it could be maybe there's like a troll smoking down there or something. Who knows? It's the random fumarole. But anyway, look at the clearly defined line between the geothermal soils, the very obviously geothermal soils, and the, uh, well, it looks like actually native bush back there. Clearly defined. So there's obviously a change in soil chemistry, not to mention the fact there's a lot more, you know, smoking hot tubes everywhere. Tony's smoking hot tubes. Get a lot of sinter deposits too, which are just precipitated silica, which uh, precipitates out of hot water, precipitates out of solution as the hot water comes to the top. It just looks like little white, uh, white cuts in the hillside. So we should mention too, that this area has only been here 60 years. There was no geothermal here. It just popped up. It can pop up that quick. When you live that close to a very active subduction zone, I think it's, I think it's actually like 40 millimeters a year that those plates are moving at that Pacific plate's diving beneath that Australian plate. It's very active. You get a lot of, you get the hot shits. You get a lot of hot shits. So there's magma very close to the surface here. Quite a few cinder cones looking like little pimples on a topographic map. God, I can't help but wonder what the soil stresses are. How do plants adapt to this? And how do geothermal areas cause speciation in plants too? Look at that lycopodium. See that? Or that's the Lycopodiella, excuse me. Cernuum. Oh, look, you got a nice shot of those pendant dongs over there, those pendant sporophylls. Tony's red hats, sinters, smoking mud holes, and piping tubes. If we don't got it, you don't need it. Look at that. See all the sinter deposits? Precipitated out of that hot water, nice. You know you like it. You can't resist. Why don't you stick a little bit in your mouth, see how it tastes. Get a nice fart smell here, all that sulfur. That hydrogen sulfide coming out of that, uh, out of those uh, smoking tubes over there. You know, we should mention too that the uh, it's rhyolitic magma beneath here. It's not basaltic magma, so this would be a, a rather gassy explosion. Okay, it'd be like you know a night eating some bad Tex-Mex, you know, down south. So this is not going to be a gentle eruption. This would be rather explosive. Not like, not like Hawaii. Right, Hawaii volcanism is pretty friendly. Down here in North Island, New Zealand, you get pretty explosive. Look at that. Stability, look at the color on it. Look at the color palette. Tell me you don't like that. Huh? Nice screensaver. Just like seeing, you know, the health insurance company headquarters on fire. Like an active, look at that. You go, you go back and forth between those as screensavers. See that? United Healthcare on fire in one frame, you know, do 20 seconds of that, then go 20 seconds to, uh, you know, to smoking hot tubes, you know. Tony's piping hot tubes. So when this hole formed, this was a rather violent eruption. Ejected material 100 meters or more away. Okay, this didn't just, this isn't a sinkhole, this didn't cave in, this blew up. You see some sulfur over there, see that yellow? Ooh. And up here on a crust, you really get a sense of just how close you are to those magma chambers. All right, and it's gonna it's gonna happen again. This stuff is still blowing up. All right, so keep that toilet polished and clean because you never know when you're gonna have to explode again. You know. And yes, I'm using toilet humor to convey an educational message. Go fuck yourself.
beautiful color. That uh, little stream cut on the side of this crevasse. Well, I guess it's more like a crevasse. The earth is literally opening up. Now, despite it being the beginning of winter, Kunzia tenuicollis, this endemic geothermal Kunzia, is still having a fine time flowering. Perhaps it's confused. So eucalyptus family, Mertaceae, you got a nectar disc in the center there, that's a red part. Multiple stamens surrounding that nectar disc, and in the center of that nectar disc, you got that orangish style. You also have five fused petals, and you'll have a little, uh, you can see the ovary, inferior ovary right there. Actually, I can't tell if it's like a half inferior, because the petals don't really fuse. It looks like inferior. I don't know. We'll call it inferior for now. Maybe someone will have an issue with it. That's okay. Anyway, you can see it's just finishing up. We have to get some nice money shots of this. Ericoid leaves, and it doesn't get very tall. You can see it's just forming a little bush just growing here, adapted to these geothermal soils. So this is a plant that only occurs in the geothermal area around Taupo. Right, basically parallel in the subduction zone, but inland a little bit, in the center of the island. All right, it's a geothermal kunzia. There's those fruits. How tiny the seeds got to be and what disperses them. They just finished flowering, so it'll turn into little, uh, little papery capsules you can see in that back one. A geothermal endemic. How do you like that? Now, if I could stick the camera in this pipe and hot fumarole for a minute where I can feel the heat, it's notable. Uh, we can look at this uh, wonderful color here. It looks like some sort of algae going off. You don't see that color in nature too much. It feels like I'm standing above a, a space heater right now. Actually, lots of warmth coming from the soil right there. Now, you could look down there. You could hear the boiling. You could see the boiling mud pits. The smell is, it smells kind of like fireworks mixed with a, you know, a, a really bad uh, Tex-Mex fart. And uh, look at the patina on the wall over there too. Everything just lush though. Loving the ferns. It's about 45 degrees, maybe 50. I'm wearing a Dago tee, a t-shirt, a hoodie, and a beanie. So it's cold. Tons of lycopods, tons of fern diversity, mosses, all different kinds of bryophytes, glyceniaceae down there, the forked ferns, and of course you got your kunzia, your edaphic endemic kunzia tenuicollis. See, they got the nice informational sign and kiosk and stuff, so you can interpret all what all the different colors are, representing different minerals that have been brought up from the depths with the water. The water goes down or comes in contact with the hot magma, the hot rocks, the hot shits, brings up all kinds of good stuff. You got the pink, meaning mercury sulfide, aka cinnabar. Got red, of course, iron oxides, yellow, of course, you got the sulfur, yellow and orange, sulfur compounds containing, maybe a little hint of arsenic in there. And of course, the purple uh, is just uh, mercury. Nice color palette. See, so the areas where you get the moss, or it's just bare, is where the more deeper rooted plants, it's too hot for them to survive. The ground is just too hot. The ground is literally warm. It feels like a heating blanket. Yeah, but moss, moss being a non-vascular plant, doesn't have roots down there, so it can grow just fine. It, can, it just grows on a little heating pad. But its roots don't actually go into the soil. If they did, it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't be there. So in that Kunzi, I mean, you can see it's even having a hard time there. Got probably very harsh soil chemistry as well. A lot of stuff being brought up with all this hot water. All that cinnabar, smoking hot tubes and pipes, different fumaroles, all the steams, and it smells kind of nice, you know? It's like somebody, again, like a Tex-Mex fart in a closed van. Look at it, look at that club moss, like a Podialis or Noom. That's beautiful, very lovely. Look, it's doing very well. They're loving that heat, apparently. Also doesn't get deep roots. Just pulled what looks like a tiny little orange piezolithus out of the ground over there. Certainly going to go for mycorrhizal ecology on this one. Just coming up right amongst all the kunzia and other stuff. So it's got to be mycorrhizal with the kunzia because that's the only thing here. So apparently this thing dries out and then turns into a little capsule and uh, that whole thing is just filled rife with spores which end up blowing all over the place. Hopefully finding a new uh, symbiotic host. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna look at this ectomycorrhizal piezolithus. We're gonna cut it open, huh? Let's go ahead and do this. Yeah, this thing is awesome. Common name is Dead Man's Foot. How shiny it is on top. Look at that. 
and they are really cool on the inside when they're not not super mature yet. You get this genus in North America too. Look course, at right? that. Oh, look at that. It looks Jeez. like a map or something. So what's going on there? It's making spores. And so this, of course, will dry out and then... Uh, It'll dry out, get real powdery. And then get spores everywhere. We got, lar we got rather large members of this genus in North America, correct? Yeah, this is the smallest one I've ever seen. Now, I'm taking a look at these. These are rather uh, colorful. You got, what do you got here? You got one on the left, an orange one, and then one on the right. What's that? Yeah, this is something awesome in the Claveriaceae. Uh, really beautiful purple color. Oh, wow, there's another one up there. I didn't even see it before. And then this thing, awesome too. This is uh, some kind of club, maybe Neolecta, probably something different. So what, what's the likelihood that both these are mycorrhizal or one of them is or what? Uh, pretty high because this glutenoglossum that we found just a foot away is also ectomycorrhizal. Why don't you go ahead and show us the glutenoglossum. Glutenoglossum is pretty rare. There's only 13 observations of it on an iNaturalist. They're an earth tongue, but unlike the other earth tongues, they're very smooth and they have a slimy stem. So the stem in that, if you feel it, it feels like it's glut glutinous covered in a layer of slime. And there's no hairs on this, right? None. Down here in a light canopy, the short canopy, we got Perosia, Eliagnifolia, Polypodiaceae, common fern here. Silvery undersides, we also got this uh, Lacaria that we saw at another geothermal area. Apparently being a mycorrhizal with, uh, it might be the geothermal Kunzia. Kunzia tenua collis. Down here we got another Cordinarius. Another mycorrhizal, oh, that's, look at the gill color on that, that's lovely. A pinkish purple. This thing was barely just, just poking its cap above the moss bed. Got a nice, that geothermal cordon areas. At least we're calling it geothermal because we've only been finding it in geothermal areas. Mycorrhizal. Coming up beneath this apacrid. Looks like some, uh, God, Luca Pogon. Who the fuck knows what it is? But there's the nascent inflorescence and a parallel leaf venation of the south, southern hemisphere ericaceae, the southern hemisphere. Uh, subfamily, the blueberry family. Yeah, lots of little astelias hiding down there too. Well, that's all I got for you today. Hopefully you got some out of that. Geothermal endemics, who would have known? And the smell of farts. How about that? Very chilly climate though. That's all I got. Have a good rest of the evening. Go fuck yourself. Bye.